In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Daikin Fit Enhanced and the Train XV-17. These are two inverter-driven heat pumps. Uh, we're going to talk about the differences between performance. We're going to be talking about their sound as far as decibel ratings, efficiency ratings. We're going to be going into COP, which stands for Coefficient of Performance. Um, and we're also going to be going through the heat pump tax credits and which of these systems qualify in what regions. And just a general overview to help you determine which system would be best for your particular situation. But before we get started, if if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider subscribing. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content helpful, subscribing is a free way that you can show your support. So that being said, let's get started and talk about these two systems from a high level overview. Now, both these systems are mid to higher end systems. So these are inverter driven heat pumps. If you're not familiar with what an inverter is and, and basically how it works from a high, without getting too nerdy, Basically, it uh, takes AC power back to DC power, and it powers a compressor that way. And so instead of having a single stage system that is basically either on at 100% capacity or off at 0% capacity, aka just not running, an inverter system actually runs along a continuum. And so the benefit is that whereas a single stage system is either running at max capacity or just off, an inverter system will start up at maybe 10 or 20 or 30% capacity and then ramp up along a continuum to 50% or 70% or whatever percent capacity it needs in order to satisfy set point and then it ramps back down and shuts off gradually and there's a few benefits that come with this one is that the systems are going to be more efficient the second is that these systems are going to be quieter they're always quieter than their single stage or two stage counterparts because when they first kick on they're operating at a lower or reduced capacity compared to their single stage counterparts now what's the difference between this xv17 and this daikin fit what are the big differences between them well obviously just looking at the daikin fit it, you can see that this is a side discharge heat pump. And when you look at the XV-17, this is like your standard style or traditional air conditioner. When you think of an upflow air conditioner where the fan is sits on top and it's a bigger box, uh, you know, that sits outside. And so one of the bigger differences between these two systems is that visually, obviously the Daikin Fit is a much smaller footprint. Now that might not be important to you. If you have plenty of space on your lot and you don't have tight lot lines, then in size is not a factor, then there's not really one system that would be better. But in this particular situation, if you lived in, let's say, home in Denver with really tight lot line and you didn't have that much space for a condenser, a Daikin Fit might be a better option just because you have a little bit smaller footprint to work with. So it is one of the biggest things. That's why they call it the Fit, right? It's their way of branding this as a system that works well when you have any sort of like space constraints and you're working with a smaller area. Now, the XV17, this is also a variable speed heat pump. And in terms of the efficiency ratings, we'll just kind of dive in and do a high level overview on these. Now, this system is up to 17 CR2. It's up to eight and a half on the HSPF2 factor. And then the decibel ratings as low as 55, as high as 76 decibels. And the uh, fans is a variable speed fan as well. Now, when you look at this system, this also has a variable speed fan. It also has a variable speed compressor. And then in addition to that, this particular system will run a little bit quieter. This system runs as low as 43 decibels, I believe, as low as 45 decibels on the decibel rating is what you can see here. The CR2 rating is a little bit higher. It's up to 17.5 on the CR2 rating. The HSPF2 rating goes up to 8.6, and it's actually 10. Um, I just know that off the top of my head. And that's for the enhanced. It's actually a little bit higher on the enhanced heat pumps, if I'm not mistaken. I might be confusing that with EER ratings. But bottom line is, between these two systems, they're basically neck and neck in terms of efficiency. Daikin Fit might be a little bit more efficient in terms of the CR2 rating being a little bit higher. Uh, but the bottom line is these are both inverters, have variable speed compressors. So they're both going to be pretty quiet systems and pretty efficient. So why would you choose one versus the other? Well, let's talk about cold climate and hot climate performance because all heat pumps and all you know air conditioners are not created equal in that regard. And one thing to consider when looking at this side discharge system is that, and I have uh, right now, I have cold climate numbers pulled up. So I have the heating performance pulled up on this chart that will explain kind of the difference probably look like gibberish to you if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and haven't seen these charts before and just for efficiency's sake we'll use this first one that pops up this is the two ton and this is the enhanced version of the daikin fit so the daikin fit heat pump it, there's an enhanced version and then there's just a regular version when you see this e here in the nomenclature that stands for enhanced and what all these numbers mean is this number at the top
top is the outdoor air temperature. So where it says 65 degrees, that's an outdoor air temperature. And so when we're looking at outdoor air temperature at the top, right, 65, this is the outdoor air temperature all the way down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we look at MBH, what this is, is BTUs. So this is 23,000 BTUs, which is roughly two tons of heating capacity. And this number right here stands for coefficient of performance. So this is COP. COP, what that means is that's the amount of watts of energy required to produce one watt heat. So if we look at this system having a COP of 3.3, what that means is for one watt of energy consumed, this heat pump can produce 3.3 watts of heat energy. And so the reason that's important is that's a reflection of how efficient this is compared to just basic electric space heat, for example. Now, if you look at how the system performs at five degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that it puts out 16,000 BTUs and the COP is two. Now, the reason this is relevant is because when we go over here to this tax credit eligibility and you can see this uh, train XV-17 says it's a cold climate, you know, heat pumper qualifies for the cold climate tax credit. And the same is true for this DZ-6. It says it's a uh, cold climate heat pump as well. There's one caveat to that in that not the re in order to qualify, what must happen is basically two things. So when you look at this heat pump tax credit eligibility page, which I'll make sure to link this all in the description for you, but you can basically click on any of these models where it says tax credit eligible, and it'll take you to this page right here. But these blue states are states that require a cold climate heat pump in order to qualify for that tax credit, because these are primarily cooling regions, not heating regions. And if we look in these southern states, these southern states require heat pumps that are more geared towards cooling effectiveness and cooling efficiency because it's obviously hotter down there. So you're going to be running your air conditioner more in Texas and you're going to be running your heater more in Colorado. So that's why they change the efficiency requirements between the two regions in order to have cold climate heat pumps and or just warm climate heat pumps. Now, this one thing you'll notice when we're looking at the DZ6 on this Energy Star site, in order for this system to qualify as a cold climate heat pump, these numbers I just showed you are part of what that requirement is. So basically this system has to maintain a minimum of 70% capacity compared to what it was operating at at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to maintain 70% of that at 5 degrees Fahrenheit. This system does that. And then it, the second thing that it has to do is it has to maintain a COP of 1.75 at 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which this system does as well. And so that's why the Daikin Fit Enhanced qualifies as a cold climate heat pump. Now the cold climate heat pumps that qualify, as you can see, is the two ton all the way up to the three and a half ton system. Now, if you look at the four ton system, which is right here, you can see these are the BTU ratings that system qualifies for. So it's up to the four ton system on the Daikin Fit. However, on the XV-17, one thing to note is that it's really only one system that qualifies as a cold climate heat pump. Now, I'm not able to do a deep dive into the XV-17 because unfortunately they don't have the manual listed where I was trying to look for these manuals and, and kind of went through everything on Train's website and they don't have that available where I can really dive into the performance data at the various temperatures. But what we can gather, if you want one resource that you can look at that I like to use is right here, if you click explore models, honestly, your contractor should be doing this or can do this for you. And they'll have, if you're talking to a train dealer or a Daikin dealer, they're gonna be able to tell you what does and doesn't qualify in your particular Metro. But if I type in XV17 and wait for that system um, to pop up, this particular system will show up as well as all the matches. And as you can see, there's 475 matches. We're not going to go through all of them in this video, but you can see that some of them qualify and some of them don't. And we can, for example, all these qualify in the southern states, but they don't in the northern states. And that's going to vary based on the tonnage of the outdoor unit as well as the indoor unit matchup. Because if you use a different furnace or a different coil, that's going to affect the matchup and the efficiency of that particular system. And so that's why they want to make sure the system you're using is going to have a matchup. And as you can see, this is a five ton system, which this qualifies again in the southern states, but there's not really the only ones that qualify in the northern states. If you want to find out which system is tax credit eligible in the north, you can just click this to get an idea and it will sort those for you so you can see which systems qualify. And it's actually not even pulling up here. So bottom line is this stuff is, is kind of confusing. And so you can research that and, and look that up to see. But if we go in here, you can also 
also filter through the content and select a filter like for example contains yes and it'll pull up which system and so like according to this right now on the xv17 it's showing no systems qualify but that's why you're going to want to just verify with a local contractor because as you can see these systems do qualify in the north this is a different manufacturer but this is an example of what you'll see you know these systems don't qualify in the southern regions but they do in the northern regions and so this is just a tool that you can use where you can plug in your exact model number of your condenser and determine whether or not it actually qualifies for that tax credit. Now, in summary, the difference between these two systems, they're both pretty much neck and neck. Um, there's a few benefits to going with the Daikin Fit if you're looking for something that's space saving. And then if you're looking for something that performs better in hotter climates, then the Train XV-17 may be something that works a little better because one thing I do know, we just focused on the XV-17 when I was doing the lookup on this last one, is that the Daikin Fit Enhanced does not qualify in the southern states for the heat pump tax credit because it is more of a cold climate heat pump that doesn't mean that it doesn't perform well because it actually does we install these in phoenix and they do great the downside is they are capped at tonnages at four tons and so we can't install anything over four tons but they do work great in that market so it's not something that i would steer you away from if you're in a warmer market but if you're trying to take advantage of a tax credit i would maybe compare the two systems and their total price to see where things come in after tax credit eligibility it, because that can play a, a part in the total price that you're going to pay at the end of the day and whether or not you qualify for that heat pump tax credit. It's not make or break. You really want to just get the best system for your specific home and determine what's important to you. But that's kind of just a broad overview of the matchup and I or the head to head comparison between these two systems. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas, I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or infrared radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region we're partnering with those contractors so click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted hvac dope show contractor in your area and if you found this content helpful please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and again consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and as promised earlier there's a few videos popping up on the screen that youtube thinks you should watch as well as a video about heat pump efficiency ratings so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode